What's up guys, it's Matt with Galaxy Games 843, back with another vending video. Today's not just a collection video, we're also going to do some maintenance in this video as it's a follow-up video to the previous video here from the laundromat location. Now if you remember, the last time we were here, our condenser coils were all frozen over, so we had to check to make sure that things were good to go. And we're gonna check it each time we come back to this location just to make sure that it's not freezing over. And as you saw, it wasn't frozen over, so obviously unplugging the machine, letting it thaw out, plugging it back in, everything's good to go. I apparently did not have the door latched good enough, and some warm air got in there and caused that, uh, that condenser to freeze over. Anyway, so I hit the service button. As you can see, we had a JC7 error and a JC10 error. So those are jammed column errors. And as you can see, column seven is my yellow Gatorade. So there's a jam there. But I never understood what JC10 was because this machine only has nine columns. I've talked about that in previous videos, but I think we have our answer. Um, in this, and we're, and we're going to figure it all out. We're going to get it all fixed in this video. So make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video so you can see exactly what we do to get this machine back up, running, 100% working, and all good to go. So right now, we're just clearing a jam. So we got to pull all these Gatorades out in order to get to the one that's actually stuck. And you're going to see the um, arm or whatever you want to call it, that motor is actually got it got that uh one of the gatorades crimped or pinned in there and it's stuck in place which means it can't vend because it's stuck i know it's kind of tough to see in there but if you look closely in there you can see it's it's kind of trapped in that uh that vending column or whatever you want to call it i don't know anyway so what we need to do we need to pick everything out then we're going to take off our our um, control cover here and we're going to look at these different cam settings. There's the wide cam setting and all the rest are the regular cam settings. And let's go ahead and you apply the, the uh, or loosen the brake and back that uh, rotor, whatever you want to call it. We're going to back it up and release the pressure off of that yellow Gatorade that's in there because it's stuck on there. And I know this part of the video is really difficult to see. But all I'm doing is I'm, I'm releasing the brake and kind of manually just turning that cam or whatever the heck you want to call it in there that's got that Gatorade pinned in place. And as you can see, the Gatorade is now um, free. It's movable, and I just need to pull it out of there. So I need to just spin that cam a little bit more in order to give the clearance to pull that uh, that Gatorade out of there. And when I pull it out, I'm going to show you. You're going to see it's got a big crease in it. It's got it's crimped or pinched or whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, so obviously, we're not able to sell that. I don't want to put it back in the machine to have it vend and a customer get a... a I, I guess a messed up Gatorade. Who knows? It would probably vend okay, but I just don't like to play like that. So we're going to pull it out there. Let's take a look at it. You can see there's a big crease in the side. We'll take that back to the shop. I'll probably end up drinking it myself. Who knows? So now we've got just uh, we've got the JC10 and JC7 column errors. Now notice I'm pressing those buttons and the buttons are not doing anything. Now, if you follow me on Facebook or in the different vending groups, I did post some questions about what this might be. Everybody says it's the vending button membrane there behind those buttons. And ultimately, that is what we're going to replace in this video too. So right now, we're just clearing that jam in column 7. I press the door button. The door switch still works. So that's going to home it and therefore recognize it as a working column again. And it should no longer give us a J7 error. We're still going to get that J10 error though. So we're going to, after we get all these Gatorades put back in place, we're going to hit that uh, service switch again. We're going to check for any other errors and we're going to troubleshoot those buttons. Because again, the buttons are not working. They're not doing anything. We're not making any sales right now because the buttons aren't working. And ultimately, we're going to fix that in this video too. We're going to get to that in just a moment though. So like I said, we're just loading those Gatorades back up. After I get that taken care of, I'm going to check the service status, see what errors we got. We're still going to have that JC10 error, but there's only nine columns, so I still don't understand, or at least at the time I didn't. And I guess right now I even still don't technically completely understand what the JC10 error is, but I have some speculations now, and we'll talk about it as we go through it. So there we go. So I locked there. I closed the machine up. It's going to home back in place, and it's going to, like I, like I said, it's homing. Once it's done, we're going to see if the buttons are working. If they're you know, When we press the button, it should give us the price. Or if it's sold out, it should say sold out. So homing, homing, homing. Let's get through that. And then we'll go ahead and test those buttons to see what the heck's happening. And for whatever reason, that homing message takes forever. So now I'm pressing buttons. I'm not getting any prices. I'm not getting any messages that say sold out. So none of the buttons are working. Everybody says it's the button membrane. And quite honestly, 
I, I researched everywhere about this. I couldn't find any videos or information about how to change the membrane. Um, I ended up ordering some new button membrane from DNS Vending in Ohio. And um, they're kind of my go-to anymore when it comes to maintenance parts. Um, they did all the, the Red Bull kits for my Royal machine. Uh, what else did I order from them? I know I ordered some other stuff from them. I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. But basically when I've got a need for parts, I've been using DNS Vending because they're super fast for shipping. And like, like I said, with this machine, with those buttons not working, I'm basically dead in the water. I'm not making any money on this machine. So I did want to take a look at the back of the buttons. I'm trying to figure out how this works. And I do see that there's a plug, um, kind of like a data plug, going behind those those buttons, but in, in between the buttons and that metal strip. So I'm going to reseat it. Sometimes when you reseat a connection, that will make the connection work. But again, this machine is an outdoor machine. And it just rained. You can see there's water on the ground. There's condensation on the ground. It just rained here earlier this day. And when it rains, of course, the machine gets wet on the front. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that some of that water gets behind those buttons. And obviously, it's caused a problem with that button membrane. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the, my lock off and I'm going to power cycle the machine. I'm going to unplug it, get it going, going to plug it back in and see what happens. Uh, sometimes when you just do a power reset or a power cycle, sometimes that does correct problems as well. Just like when you call tech support, the first thing they say for your computer is, did you restart it, <laughs> right? So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to restart the machine. Still no action from the buttons. Um, at this point, I'm kind of like cutting my losses. I figure I might as well just do my collection. I'm not gonna stock anything, anything up in the machine right now because it's not working. So there's no point in stocking it up. But let's get the money out of there at least. So let's go into our collection, starting off with the coins. And like I said, it did just rain, so watch this. I'm going to actually hold the coin bucket up, and you can see the water dripping out of that. So all the coins are all wet. And when your coins are wet, that's going to make them stick to the inside of the coin bucket too. So I'm kind of, uh, you can see them sticking inside there. I'm kind of shuffling things around, repositioning, because this coin bag was actually quite heavy. There was a ton of coins. As a matter of fact, the total amount of coins collected from this pour right here was $103 just in coins. Most of that is quarters, but there are some dimes, some nickels, and um, also some, uh, some, I guess, dollar coins. Or There might not have been, there might not have been any dollar coins in that pool. Um, cash next, let's go and pull the cash out. And there's ones and fives up here, quite a bit more in, as well. So there was uh, $96 in ones and another $40 in fives. So the total amount of money collected was $239 not including any credit card sales. All right, let's move on to the repair. All right, here it is a few days later. We're back to the machine. I've got all my parts from DNS Vending in stock. First thing we want to do is power down the machine because anytime we're working with those electronics, we want to make sure the machine is powered off. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the power cord up here on the box. Let's unlock the machine, open it up. Of course, we're going to do another check to make sure that those coils aren't frozen over to make sure we've got that. We're out of the out of the woods with that problem. And then we're going to start to work on our, our, uh, our repair. And again, all we're going to do is replace the button membrane behind the buttons. And again, I, I could not find any info online about how to do this. So hopefully any of you out there that are looking for this information, hopefully this is going to be helpful to you. So what I'm going to do first is unplug the existing membrane from the, the, the wiring harness and I'm going to struggle with it for just a minute here so watch me struggle with that once I finally get it unplugged we're going to remove that metal strip and there's like I think there's like five or six um, nuts that need to be removed so let's go ahead and struggle and get that unplugged and then uh, I couldn't get it unplugged so I, I'm going to take a look at the new membrane just to make sure I know how that button works or how the release works so I'm taking a look at the new membrane and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure we get that unplugged properly. We'll remove everything. We'll start replacing things. And I will throw a disclaimer out there. I've never done this before, guys. So this was me learning as I go. And hopefully some of you out there can find this information useful. Because again, I've never done this before. I couldn't find any instructions online on how to do it. And you're going to see kind of what works and what doesn't work as part of this process. So I've now I've got the old membrane unplugged. I'm going to go through my socket set and find the right socket to remove these nuts and that one is obviously too small let's find the right one i think second try i think i get it here let's see yeah there's the right one okay so we're going to load that up into the drill and we're going to use the drill to remove all those nuts um, once we get that taken care of you're going to see what i mean when i say button membrane because i'm like 
I'm picturing like a like a rubbery material, but actually the membrane is, it looks like a, a flexible circuit board almost. It's quite strange. Again, I've been working on all types of, you know, arcade machines, pinball machines, all kinds of stuff. I've never seen a button membrane like this before. So this is obviously newer technology than what I'm used to. But, and some of you out there may be like, yeah, this is like child's play. And it, it really was pretty easy to change in the long run. But uh, you're going to see my kind of trial and error of what I did and probably what you shouldn't do to make it harder or easier on yourself. So again, I'm just removing all the nuts. I didn't realize there was one at the very top. So I, I am going to have to go back in and remove that. So I've got like, I think four or even five removed, but there's still one more I have to remove. And I was struggling to get that kind of support piece off there too. Um, I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to try and pull that metal piece off. And then I realized there's still one more I need to remove. So we'll get the drill back out. We're going to remove that nut. That metal piece will come out, we'll remove that support piece, and then I'll tell you what I'm talking about here when it comes to swapping out those membranes. So let's go ahead and pull that metal piece off. Here we go. And let's move, remove that support piece. And as you can see, there's like a, there's the, the circuit board membrane and then there's those uh, kind of button extender things. So we're gonna set those off to the side for the moment. And here I am in my mind, I'm picturing like, I'm just gonna go ahead and line everything up with these holes. There's the old one. Let's move, let's move the old one out of the way. Kind of make sure my side, my everything's lined up the same now. I'm going to line up all the holes. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to line up all these holes. And I'm just going to hang it back on the machine. On those support posts that the nuts connect to. And I'm trying to line things up. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to make sure I get everything lined up perfect. And how it all goes together. Trying to understand. And I will say, this is not the way to do it. So, this is my trial and error. Like I said, I'm trying to line everything up. And ultimately, you're never going to get everything lined up and then pick it up and then move it over into place, hang it properly with keeping everything aligned how you have it. It's just not going to work. There's an easier way. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But you can see how this is working for me now. Like I said, I'm trying to line things up properly. And uh, in my mind, like I said, I was just going to pick it up, walk over to the soda machine, and hang it in place. And as I, as I got everything lined up and as I picked it up, everything just shifted and it just was not going to work like that. And looking back, I'm like, yeah, why did I even waste so much time trying to line that up when I can just use the post, the support post in the machine to do, to do all the alignments for me? So ultimately, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that uh, those rubber pieces. I'm going to mount those in place first. Then I'm going to hang the membrane, then the metal piece, connect it all back up. It's going to be good to go. So like I said, I tried to pick it up. And as you can see, it all shifted in place. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. Then I just start uh, using those those mounting brackets or those mounting, I guess, posts, we could call them those, as part of the, the process. And I'm just kind of going to kind of put everything back in place how I thought it was supposed to go. And luckily, it was the right way. <laughs> so everything worked after that. So let's get everything mounted up here. You can see, use those mounting posts to put everything back in place. The one at the bottom I didn't really need to worry about. Next thing, I'm going to do the membrane. And you need to make sure that that's lined up properly, obviously, because the buttons have to press on those little circuits inside in order for the buttons to be recognized. So again, using those same mounting posts, I'm going to put that membrane through all the different alignment holes and everything. And then that metal piece is going to go right back on and all is going to be good to go. So let's put the metal piece back on. We'll put the nuts back on. We'll connect it up. We'll power the machine up and we'll do our tests. And you can see just how easy this actually really was. Um, I really do, like I said, hope that some of you out there are going to find this information helpful if you're watching this video in a month, in a year, however long it is. Hopefully, if you have a Dixie Narco 501E vending machine and your buttons stop working, this is the easiest and probably most cost-effective way to probably fix the, the machine. So there we go. I'm going to put the nuts all back in place. We'll tighten them up with the drill again. Um, the very the one at the very top, it's kind of tough to get the drill in there, so I'm going to hand tighten that one real good. But I'm going to put as much force as I can on it with my fingers because I don't want to put the drill back up in there and strip things out. Uh, we are going to put that mounting piece back in place or that plastic piece and put one more nut on, and then it's time to tighten them up. So here we go with the drill. Let's tighten everything up. Just a couple quick, uh, couple quick uh, tightens there with the drill. Then the last thing we need to do before we power the machine on is plug that membrane back into the wiring harness. And if you recall how I struggled removing the old one from the, the wiring plug, plugging the new one back in is going to be just as difficult. As you can imagine, it's fresh, it's new, it's not as flexible, uh, but you want to make sure your pins are lined up properly. 
everything snaps into place good. It was a tight fit, I'm not gonna lie. It was kind of challenging, and I was kind of nervous I was gonna damage something or break something, so I was trying to be extra careful. There we go, getting everything plugged back in. And it, it wasn't really all the way seated in. I wasn't happy with it, so I just kept kind of messing with it. And then we got it in place. I'm gonna lock or close up the coin mech. Let's plug the machine back in. We'll start doing our initial test. Now what's gonna happen is, if things work right, when I press a button, it should either tell me a price, or if the item is sold out, it should say sold out. So just to kind of let you know, in this machine, the grape uh, is sold out, meaning there's only three in there. So that sold out switch is uh, kind of activated or deactivated. So let's do our, our test. There's $1, $1, sold out for grape, like it should be. Well, let's see, $1, then it should be so on and so forth. The, the monsters and the Gatorades are a little bit more expensive, but everything's working, guys. And uh, one thing I also noticed too, that JC10 error is now gone. So I don't know if JC10 means it's a button or membrane error, but uh, the JC10 error is now gone. So in this video, we cleared the coin or the, uh, the, the column jam for jam column seven, JC7. We replaced the button membrane, which seemed to clear the JC10 error. Now when we approach the machine, that decimal point is no longer flashing. We are gonna get a quick uh, service in here. We're gonna stock up some uh, of the sodas in this machine. While we're stocking those up, I do wanna remind you guys, if you found this video helpful, or if you like these maintenance type videos, as, long as, our, as well as our vending videos, please consider subscribing to Galaxy Games 843 here on YouTube. Um, as you know, we're trying to grow. We're almost to that 3,700 subscriber mark. So if you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification too so you get notified when both new videos and live streams go live. Also, while you're down there, make sure you smash that like button. As you know, when you hit that like button, it helps the YouTube algorithm promote our videos to other new viewers. And again, it helps the channel grow. All right, so we're gonna stock up a couple things in this video. We did Pepsi, we're working on Coke. We're gonna do Mountain Dew. And we're gonna do, I think, one orange and definitely some blue Gatorade. Um, I'm having trouble finding grape soda right now, so I'm not gonna stock up the grape soda in this video. Um, I do know there's some locations a couple towns over that have grape soda. So one of these nights this week, I am gonna run, make a run for grape soda. But you know the gas prices, guys, right? As Reyes would say, what about the gas? <laughs> so uh, that's gonna be soon. Um, so we did our collection in this video, we did some repairs, we, we did, we're doing some service and some stocking. So ultimately, everything is now fixed in this machine. We can start making money again, because as you know, that's kind of the most frustrating thing as a vending machine operator, is when you're not making money, when you're not getting that business, or when, when things aren't happening. So luckily, it's all fixed up. All right, couple extra cans of Coke. We're gonna just stack those on the orange column for now. The next time we come to this machine, I've got them in there in reverse. So I know that I need to um, get them in place. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video there. So you didn't see me stock up the Gatorade or the Mountain Dew, which is all good. And we're gonna do our final check. So I'm checking the coin mech, making sure everything's good there. Um, but that's gonna be about it. Making sure everything's working, everything's good to go. We are back in business, guys. So let's lock this machine up and then it's time to wrap the video up. Hey guys, thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're working our way to that next milestone and we need your help to get there. So if you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button, click that bell notification so you get notified when our new videos and our live streams go live. And while you're down there, please give us a thumbs up to like the video and also make sure you share our videos with your friends. All right guys, thanks so much for taking the time to watch our videos and thank you so much for your support. We really do appreciate you all. It is time to wrap this video up, guys. This is Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We'll see you next time.